The latest bout of trouble in South Africa's mining industry entered its second week on Monday. Subsequently, the country's gold stocks index hit an almost 12-year low and the rand is down at levels last seen four years ago. Joining me to discuss is Mohamed Nala from Nedbank Capital in Johannesburg. So Mohamed, first of all, if I could ask you how you think this recent depreciation of the rand will affect policy direction. I think if you look at the recent spike that we've seen come through in the RAND, that certainly would uh, dampen some of the recent expectations that have been rampant in the market around the potential for a policy rate cut. Uh, the RAND certainly weakening does have a, quite a considerable inflationary impact in terms of uh, South Africa's consumer, uh, consumer inflation. And it usually does have a, a, a lag effect of around three to six months. So I think with the RAND at or around current levels, uh, in fact, anything above nine RAND certainly looks as though the upside risks to inflation will continue to persist. Consumer price inflation in South Africa rose more than expected in the last quarter, as did inflation coming in at 5.9%. With this in mind, is inaction the best route for the Reserve Bank to take here, would you say? Yes, I, th I think the upside surprise in terms of the latest inflation print, which was actually released this morning, uh, certainly indicates that the, the risks to a higher inflation haven't dissipated just yet. Inflation or the inflation target as outlined by the Reserve Bank uh, is between 3 to 6 percent. And with inflation currently at 5.9 percent, we're dangerously high. Uh, we're close to the upper end of that particular limit. Uh, but at the same time, we've got growth at around 2.5 percent. And with a likely uh, impact of, of the mining and labor unrest to be negative for growth, the deflationary scenario, uh, or not deflationary, but rather stagflationary scenario that the South African Reserve Bank faces is certainly becoming a lot more prevalent. Uh, the, the real problem here is that even if the Reserve Bank uh, cuts interest rates, it's not necessarily going to give us the type of economic growth we require. Uh, and the reason for this is that the, the decline that we've seen come through in growth has certainly been largely impacted by the labor unrest by the mining unrest that you mentioned, and also in, in the form of a lower productivity. So I think by and large, from a monetary policy perspective, the South African Reserve Bank does remain quite accommodative. Real rates do remain in negative territory. And so as a result, I really think it is quite unlikely that we see a rate cut at tomorrow's and even potentially at July's meeting as well. Looking more locally, unrest in the mining industry continues to be blamed for damaging investor confidence. Globally, it has hit supplies and shaken markets. Now, now, the drop in the currency is already evident, but do you think it could have a more longer term damaging effect, especially if foreign portfolios are concerned? I think if you look at investors and investor nervousness, the first thing to react is certainly the RAND exchange rate. Uh, and that's really where you pick up investor capitulation rather than, uh, than in the asset market. So you don't necessarily pick it up immediately in the bond or in the equity markets, but the RAND certainly does have a very sharp and protracted reaction to investor nervousness. I certainly think over the course of the last two weeks, we've seen that RAND move from levels of below 9 RAND against the US dollar uh, to an intraday high yesterday of just below 9 RAND. Now, that's quite a pronounced move. I think that certainly reflects investor nervous, nervousness. We've also seen foreign portfolio inflows into South Africa being fairly volatile. Now, over the course of the last week, we've had an outflow from our bond market of around 2.5 billion rand. There's still a net inflow for the year. But the problem here is that South Africa is very reliant on those foreign portfolio flows in terms of financing our twin deficits. We have a very large and extended current account deficit as well as fiscal deficits. And I think over a long the time period, you know, the, the mining unrest certainly weighing not only on investor sentiment, but on economic performance, on fundamental economic data, and those two deficits will certainly feature uh, at the forefront of investors' minds uh, and lend them towards a slightly more bearish fundamental outlook on the South African economy, unfortunately. But there also have been some positives. According to reports, there is a growing middle class sector and also in so-called informal jobs. One trend is that people are paying in cash and therefore not exposing themselves to the same level of debt seen in other areas of the world. Could you tell us about some other economic trends and what would you pick out as areas of opportunity to be had in the South African economy? 
think if you look at that emerging middle class that you mentioned, uh, I certainly think that there's, there's an element of vulnerability, uh, and they certainly do remain vulnerable to the economic slowdown that we are experiencing in the domestic market. Uh, also, something that's quite important to note is that uh, the, the broader consumer base hasn't taken advantage of record low interest rates in terms of repairing their balance sheet. So debt-to-income ratios still remain quite extended, quite high. Uh, there's also then the issue of unsecured lending, which has been quite topical over the last few months. And this, as consumers continue to take on relatively more expensive debt in order to fund their lifestyle choices. Now, the real worry here is that in the wake of rising administered prices in the form of high electricity costs, falling disposable incomes, uh, that middle class that you speak about does look quite vulnerable. They look a little bit exposed. Uh, but when you're looking at the opportunities, and that was the second part of your question, I think the informal economy in South Africa still does remain quite large. And so any companies that are able to look at tapping that informal market and potentially bring them into the formal economy, that certainly represents an opportunity. Uh, and, and secondly, and this, this tends to be a trend if you look across co- corporate South Africa, is that a lot of companies are starting to look to the rest of the continent, the rest of Africa for growth. And intra-Africa trade is certainly becoming a lot more important uh, as the domestic South African market starts to reach a saturation and maturity phase on many fronts. Taking everything that we have discussed into consideration, what is your outlook for the RAND moving forward and what will be the biggest drivers? Well, I think at the moment you've got these counterbalancing factors acting on the RAND. And so, so one of the RAND supportive factors that you, that you take into account would certainly be the global carry trade and the search for yield. Uh, this has certainly underpinned demand for South African assets, specifically our bonds, but also our equities. Uh, so far this year, we've got net positive inflows into both of those markets. Uh, and I think that certainly does remain relentless for as long as the global monetary policy easing uh, continues. However, I think if you look at global investors, they're certainly becoming a lot more discerning. Uh, they're likely to look at the underlying fundamentals of the economies they start to invest in. And as a commodity-based economy, South Africa does look quite vulnerable on the back of, of, of the slowing growth we've seen come through from China. Uh, and then looking at those other RAND negative factors, you know, you've got you've got global investors starting to favor other geographies like the United States as you start to get some growth coming through there. And we've discussed uh, South Africa's current account and fiscal deficits. That certainly represents a key risk and investors are looking towards the potential of a further credit rating downgrade. That would certainly be very RAND negative. So I think all of those factors considered, uh, the RAND likely to continue its depreciating trend, uh, although we will definitely get uh, these overshoots and undershoots over a period of time. We've got a, a longer term depreciating channel on the RAND that certainly looks as though we're likely to trade within a fairly wide range of around 9 RAND to 9 RAND 85 during the rest of the year. And I wouldn't be surprised to see us end the year uh, very much around the mid end of that particular range. So let's say around the 9.45 odd mark. Mohammed, great to have your perspective today. Thank you very much. Well, that's all from me at the moment. Click back to Dicoscopy TV for today's Targets and Focus programme with my colleague Thomas Taplin. Goodbye for now.